some technical difficulties this morning, but we're good to go now. <laughs> we're going to continue looking at the Apostle Paul here in Romans chapter 1. We begin with have quite a bit of ground to cover, so I hope I can not overload y'all and make it through in a decent time. Uh, Romans chapter 1, verse 1. Paul writes here, Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated under the gospel of God. So last week we had looked at Paul before his conversion, up to his salvation. And here this verse really describes, summarizes you know, the whole life of Paul from his salvation forward. Here he describes his position, that is a servant, in his office, which was apostle, and his calling, which was the work of the ministry of the gospel. Amen. First, he describes himself as a servant of Jesus Christ. A servant, in biblical terms, means to be a slave or a bondman. Right. To be a servant <clears throat> or under the rule of another. Normally, in scriptures, you're the property of your master. Mm -hmm. It means you are completely bound to the bidding of your master, whatever it may be. Right. Really, it's no different as the servant of Christ that we are under his rule and authority and we are bound to do whatever he bids us to do. But really, that was how Paul lived his life, that he mm -hmm. just did whatever God called him to do. Then he says he's called, well, first let me make a note that Christ speaks of servants in his Gospels several times, and he always points out the good and faithful servants, and they have their rewards. <laughs> and he also, in contrast, speaks of the wicked and slothful servants, and they're always given punishment. <laughs> I'm not saying works determine what you are going to get, but there are sure are vindication of you've truly been born again if you're truly Amen. a servant of Christ. <laughs> Oh, and then he goes on to say, called to be an apostle. Mm -hmm. oh, apostle, just the generic definition, is a, a delegate, it's one who's sent. Mm -hmm. Just like the eleven were sent with the Great Commission, Paul was sent with his own commission, if you will. The office of apostle and cannot be fulfilled by anyone today. Amen. It's a, what we would call a closed office because of the qualifications as they're found in Acts chapter 1 verses 21 and 22 cannot be fulfilled by anyone that's alive today. Right. Amen. We do not begin with the baptism of John and continued with them and seeing Christ in the flesh. Exactly right. Amen. Now Paul, he seems to a struggle with justifying his apostleship throughout his life. He said in 1 Corinthians 15, he calls himself an apostle born out of time. Mm -hmm. He did see Christ in the flesh, but not like the others had. He I believe he saw him in some form, and he was struck down the road to Damascus. If it really was Paul that was called up in the, the third heaven, he no doubt saw him in a spiritual way. Mm -hmm. Verse 9 of 1 Corinthians 15, he <coughs> refers to himself as the least of the apostles because he had persecuted the church. Mm -hmm. That was always a resentment of his, I guess you could say, that he thought he wasn't worthy of the calling which he had. We don't have to turn there, but Romans 11, 13, he tells us that he is the apostle to the Gentiles, which was really told to him all the way back when he went to see Ananias in Acts 9, 15, that he would be sent to the Gentiles. Just as the 11 were sent out to go preach the gospel of the whole world, Paul was sent primarily to minister unto the Gentiles. In fact, in Galatians chapter 2, we can turn there and read that real quick. Galatians chapter 2, and verses 7 and 8. Thank you. 
right here, referring to his, his apostleship and comparing it to Peter's. He says, but contrawise, when they saw that the gospel of Excuse me. Oh, this uncircumcision was committed unto me, as the gospel of circumcision was committed. There wasn't a Peter, mm -hmm. for he that wrought effectually in Peter to the apostleship of the circumcision, the same was mighty in me toward the Gentiles. Amen. You know, Peter's ministry was primarily to the Jews, and Paul's was primarily to the Gentiles, and they both did preach to both groups. The fact that. When Paul went to Corinth, he tried to preach the Jews first, and he got fed up with them and went to the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. But Paul said he seems to, throughout his writings, attempt to justify or establish his apostleship because he was <coughs> not a traditional apostle, you should say. Mm -hmm. Right. Yet he was called to be an apostle unto the Gentile people. And as we'll see today, he had a great far-reaching impact. Mm -hmm. Lastly, he says he was separated in the gospel of God. This is his, his calling, his mission, if you will, to, to do the work of the ministry of the gospel, to spread the gospel, to preach the gospel. In Galatians 1, 15 and 16 says that he was separated under the grace of God, even before he was born. Mm -hmm. See, this was confirmed by the church in Acts 13 when they, with the prayer and fasting, the Holy Ghost said, separate unto me Paul and Barnabas mm -hmm. from the work we're going to call them. So Paul was separated. He was set apart. He was appointed, if you will. For the gospel, and that is how he spent the rest of his life was really for the furtherance of the gospel. Except I think I said last week, aside from Christ, Paul was probably our greatest example of how he went off to live in this life. The greatest, certainly the greatest example in of man of how to be a follower of Christ. Mm -hmm. And really how we should live our lives completely dedicated to the cause of Christ. And I'd like us to look really at the life of Paul as recorded in the book of Acts. We certainly can't read all of it, so I'll try to summarize it all for us. Because it really covers about half of the book of Acts. Right. Starting in Acts 13, though, we said so that's when he is separated by the Holy Ghost. Him and Barnabas are really uh, ordained and sent out by the church there in Antioch. We see as a example of how one is to be sent out. His first missionary journey begins there in Acts 13 and lasts all the way through chapter 14. Mm -hmm. It is in this journey, he begins to go by the name of Paul instead of Saul, verse number 9 of chapter 13. As I mentioned, it was Paul and Barnabas that set out, and John Mark who joined them. Mm -hmm. So just to give you a, kind of a summary of what, where all they went and what all they did on this mm -hmm. first trip, they left from Antioch and they went to Seleucia, a city in Syria. Then they went to the Isle of Cyprus and they preached in several different cities there. We know at least one person was saved. Mm -hmm. uh, Acts 11 and 9 tells us that there were already some believers there in Cyprus when they were scattered abroad because of persecution. That was one of the places they went to. Mm -hmm. so, we, so there seems to be that there was a church established there, though we were not told any more about it in scripture. But from Cyprus, he went there to a city called Perga. Mm -hmm. It's from here where John Mark would depart from him and kind of disappoint Paul. That would lead to arguments later between Paul and Barnabas. And then they went to a different Antioch, Antioch of, I'm not sure it was, Pisidia. Paul would have great liberty to preach here. Mm -hmm. 
But then the next week, as we'll see, is the, seems to be the pattern. The Jews rise up against them, oppose them, but it says many believed anyway. Acts 13, 48. But then the Jews ran them out of the town. And they went to a city called Iconium. It says <clears throat> they stayed there for a long time in Iconium. Verse 3 of chapter 14. It says, but some of the rulers sought to stone them, so they fled to Lystra and Derby. Lystra was the hometown of a certain half three calf Jew named Timothy. Mm -hmm. They would, on their second trip, they would meet up with Timothy, but this time they stopped there and in that area they had healed the crippled man. And that's when all the people thought Paul and Barnabas were gods. Mm -hmm. They called them Mercury and Jupiter. <laughs> it was also here where Paul was stoned and everyone just assumed he was dead. So the apostles gathered around him and then he just got up and walked in the city. Amen. Just as if nothing had happened. But continuing on from there, as they, they went back through many of the other places they had stopped at. And they preached and said they ordained elders in every city. So I don't know if the, the churches had already been organized in their first stop or somewhere along the way, but at this point there were churches organizing each of these cities and now they had elders or pastors ordained. And so they made a, they eventually made their way back to Antioch and gave a report back to the church there. Obviously they didn't have cell phones and internet to report back like we do. Right. Then in the first part of chapter 15, there comes up the discussion of circumcision and keeping the law. There will be a great debate and Paul and others will make their way to the apostles at Jerusalem and we will come to the conclusion that the Gentiles abstain from meat, suffered idols, from blood, and from things strangled, from fornication. That really the keeping of the law was not a New Testament thing, not in right. that sense. <clears throat> Amen. But then we'll begin in verse 36 of chapter 15 all the way through <coughs> chapter 18, verse 22, where we find the events of Paul's second missionary journey. Him and Barnabas set to go out, but then they had their falling out over down Mark and go their separate ways. So Paul chose Silas to go with them this time. Well, they would leave out from Antioch and they went to many of the churches that they were organizing their first trip. Mm -hmm. like I mentioned earlier that here they would meet Timothy when they get to Lystra. And he would accompany them, accompany them on their journeys. So then they went to Phrygia and Galatia. As we know, the church of the Galatians was established here, Paul had set out to go into Asia, but the Holy Spirit wouldn't allow them to proceed any further. So they went up to the city of Troas, which is in Turkey. And Paul would get what is often called the vision of the Macedonian call. This would lead to the gospel being brought to Europe and eventually to us. Amen. One thing we should take note of from that particular instance is that we need to follow what the Holy Spirit leads, not what we desire. Amen. So Paul was fully set to go to Asia, but the Holy Ghost said to go towards Europe. Amen. So, from, <clears throat> so after he got this Macedonian call, he it made haste and went towards Greece and passed through a few towns, Neopolis and I'm not even sure how you say this other one is. So, same with Thracia. They, so they would make their way up towards Greece and to Philippi. And we know Philippi is where Lydia was saved, and then they were thrown in jail, and the jailer was saved, and perhaps the whole prison was. They bad. But then they would go up to Thessalonica and the 
church there would be established. Of course, like I said, a reoccurring theme that the Jews would rise up against them here in Thessalonica. And so I think it was Jason was here and they, they brought him out and tried to have him give, give up Paul, but they sent Paul by night to Berea. Paul goes to Berea and Paul, Silas, and Timothy to establish the church there. And this is a church where it said they were more noble than those of Thessalonica because they studied the scriptures. Mm -hmm. they be, these things be so. But as it would be, the Jews from Thessalonica Paul, Paul to Berea, stirred up the people there against Paul. So Paul went on to Athens and left Timothy and Silas behind to help establish the church there. Then in Athens, so Paul would preach and teach against their rank of idolatry, and it would be here that he give us, I guess you could call it a famous sermon, on Mars Hill. Mm -hmm. Then Paul would go on from Athens to Corinth, where he'd meet Aquila and Priscilla. Then they had, were Jews that had fled from Italy. Paul would find companionship with them because they were tent makers like he was. Mm -hmm. We'll hear the Church of Corinth would be established. Then Silas and Timothy rejoin Paul in Corinth. And from there they stay at, at least Paul stays a year and a half before he heads out again and takes Priscilla and Aquila with him. He makes a, a brief stop in Ephesus and leaves Priscilla and Aquila there. Right. Through this, the church at Ephesus would be established. Mm -hmm. And finally makes his way back to Antioch once again. And almost immediately, verse 23 of chapter 18, he sets out again after it says, after he had spent some time there, that is at Antioch, he departed. And he, much of his third trip is going back to the churches that had already been established and revisiting them. Mm -hmm. So he first goes to Galatia and Phrygia to strengthen them, it says. And he, that's around the time that Apollos would come on the scene. Mm -hmm. And he would make his way to Ephesus. And though a church had been established, they were very established in doctrine. So he right. stayed there for two years teaching and instructing them. The scriptures say that during this time, Gaius and Artart, Art, excuse me, Aristarchus would accompany Paul on the journeys. He said once again, there will be an uproar from the people this time because many of the idolaters were turning from their idolatry, so the right. idol makers were losing money. There you go. So they, he would leave once again, facing persecution, and said he would go out and visit the churches in Macedonia and make his way to Greece and stay there for three months. He left from there and he went back through Macedonia once again to avoid capture by the Jews. Mm -hmm. so at this point, they were not very happy with Paul. But on this journey back, he was joined by several different brethren, and I think scripture don't say, but it appears that Luke joins along the way because right. he begins to refer to the company as we. Mm -hmm. We, if you want to read all the different brothers that join him there, that's in chapter 20, verse 4. Mm -hmm. And they there make their way to Philippi and Troas. This trip to Troas is where Paul was long preaching and he typed his fellow out of the third story window and was right. up his dead and Paul brought him back to life. Mm -hmm. so after that he, so he makes several stops in various cities along the way back to Jerusalem is where he was headed. He ends up in a, a town called Miletus 
He gives us farewell to the Ephesians, knowing that he would not get to see them again. And many of the brethren there are sorrowful mm -hmm. for his departure. Let me make several more stops along the way. And each time the brethren warn him not to go to Jerusalem. Yet Paul would say that he goes bound in the spirit, not knowing what shall befall him there. Right. Then eventually around chapter 20 and verse number was it 22 I think or no verse number 17 of chapter 21 is where he finally makes it to Jerusalem and they Luke writes the brethren received us gladly when he <laughs> reported there to the church of all that have been going on in his ministry and the saints were rejoicing that This will be the last of Paul's missionary journeys, but he would still spread the gospel. Mm -hmm. It was from this time on till his death that, right, really, that the Jews sought to kill him. They arrested him, but he, due to his Roman citizenship, appealed. He eventually would make his way to King Agrippa, mm -hmm. where he would give his testimony and. King Agrippa would say those infamous words, almost I'll persuade me to be a Christian. Right. Agrippa would have let him go, but because of his appeal, he was, had to go before Caesar. Mm -hmm. So he is sent on to the city of Rome in Italy, and he would, eventually, he would be shipwrecked along the way. Mm -hmm. He ends up on this. Isle of Melita, that's where he would shake off the poisonous snake and not have any harm. And everyone marveled at him and came to be healed and such. And that. But he would eventually make his way to Rome, and if I understand correctly, he was essentially on house arrest for the next two years. Yet he continued to really work his ministry there. <laughs> He had several visit him as he could. He believed that he wrote many of his epistles during this time. Do we, no matter how we may be incapacitated, we should still strive to do the work God has called us to do. Amen. Really, the book of Acts ends with that. It doesn't tell us the rest of the life of Paul, the tradition or history are correct at all that believe that he was beheaded by Emperor Nero. Nero was a very wicked ruler and killed many Christians and mm -hmm. persecuted them. The, the city of Rome burned in around AD 64 and he blamed the Christians for it. Mm -hmm. Some believe that Paul was beheaded as a result of this. However, it happened, we know that Paul spent the entirety of his life from his conversion until his death doing the work God had called him to do. Amen. There was no getting off spot, no retiring, no. Amen. There was no taking it easy for a while. So Paul forsook all else and gave his life completely to the gospel. Is the example of how we ought to live for the cause of Christ. See, so he faced many difficulties, many trials, and yet he remained faithful through all of those things. Amen. That we would do good to live even half as good as Paul did. Lord willing, we'll continue on in our study in the book of Romans next week or week after next amen paul i know that was a very quick overview of his life but i hope you were able to get something from it amen really 
aside from Christ, Paul is our greatest example of how one ought to live in this life. Amen. How just being faithful to the work he was called to do had such far reaching impacts. I'm sure Paul did not expect that half of his half of the New Testament would be made up of his letters. Right. I'm sure he did not realize that his the simple faithfulness would lead to the gospel really being spread throughout the entire world. Mm -hmm. So it came to Europe, from Europe to the United States, and then we, at least in the past, were faithful to spread the gospel throughout the world. Amen. And yet, Paul just simply said, by the grace of God, I am what I am. Mm -hmm. We should not, we should be careful about boasting about what we have done for God and just simply say, Amen. Look what God has done for me. And that's what how Paul seemed to conduct himself. Mm -hmm. Let us live a faithful life like Paul did, and we would do a whole lot more in service of God. Amen. Let's go ahead and close with that thought. Mm -hmm.